that we've cleaned the oil pan in preparation for reassembly. We're also cleaning the flange area. And I prefer to use a razor blade for this. And you want to make sure that you clean all of the areas around the bolt holes all the way around the perimeter. Clean all these surfaces really well and make sure there's all the debris is out of here. You want a nice good flange surface and you also want to inspect this area for damage. Make sure that nobody's pried on it or did anything that's going to cause an imperfection in the ceiling flange. If there's any imperfections you can almost guarantee a leak. Okay, my personal preference is denatured alcohol to do a final surface prep of the flange area. A lot of mistakes are made that create oil leaks because of improper surface preparation. I'm using a lint-free towel along with the denatured alcohol to create a totally dry, lint-free surface. I would recommend doing the same. You can also use carburetor cleaner. Um, anything that's really going to be leave a nice dry surface behind. Sometimes lacquer thinner can be used, mineral spirits, anything like that. So get as much oil out of this area as possible, even some of the residual that's left around the case parting line, and then we'll be ready to install the oil pan with a deep sump and also the oil pickup tube. At this time, we'll introduce the oil pickup tube and spacer. With the O-ring installed, as you can see here, we have liberally applied oil to this surface to hopefully get rid of any chance of scarring the O-ring. It goes in place like so. Then we've also got the pickup tube itself with another one of the same O-rings that's also been lubricated. That installs like so. Now we're going to go ahead and install our hardware. The first piece of hardware we have already applied the blue Loctite to. You want to do the same thing. Okay, and now we're going to introduce our second bolt, also with Loctite already on it as well. Your factory bolts will not work for this. You must use the longer hardware we have provided with the kit. Now we're going to torque these to the specified torque of 7 foot-pounds. Okay, and you want to physically look at the oil pickup tube and ensure that there is no foreign object debris that is blocking it. And you even want to do a physical inspection even before you bolt it on as well. Now we're ready to install the spacer and we'll be done. Okay, now we've already married our deep sump to the pan as you can see here just laying on top of the sealant. And at this point, you want to inspect your oil control windows and those things and make sure that everything is good to go, that you haven't left anything out, okay? And then you just lift it up into place and then apply your blue Loctite to the fasteners and start installing them. Okay, just continue all the way around the perimeter getting your bolt started by just finger tight only. You want to ensure that you don't cross thread any of these and that they're all lined up. Okay, now I'd like to bring your attention to this area. This is the cable safety cable here and, they were, and basically how it attaches to the engine, you'll notice that our deep sump spacer it comes very close to this. Ours barely cleared. We got lucky. There are some instances where you need to remove a little bit of material from either of the two components to make sure that you don't have any contact. Ours only has a couple thousandths of an inch, but it's not enough to worry about because it does have clearance. So that is an area that you want to make sure is not contacting. If it is, it could hold this down and create an oil leak right here. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and tighten these fasteners to seven foot-pounds. We're going to go across the engine. Okay, as you can see that all around this perimeter, we've got a nice, even film of residual sealant 
that tells me that we had just enough on there. You can get too much. You should have just about this, this amount that's squeezed out of these two surfaces. If you don't see some, you should be concerned that you actually got enough. Okay, so what I'm using is a little bit of denatured alcohol to wipe this away. This has no cure time. This is an anaerobic sealant, so it's only going to basically dry between the surfaces, and it actually works when the air is shut off to it. So this residual serves no purpose at all. You can get rid of all of it um, that you would like. Or really, it's not going to do any harm just to leave it there. It doesn't look the world's best, but it's not, uh, not going to harm anything if you leave some of this residual there. Okay, with that, after we finish cleaning this, we're going to be able to reinstall our drain plug and reservice the engine and start it up. Okay, now we are installing the hard anodized billet aluminum replacement oil drain pr plug from Ellen Engineering. And this is equipped with a rare earth magnet. Okay. Now we are introducing a torque wrench, torquing to the factory specified torque value. With that, we can service the engine with the oil of your choice, and we'll be finished with the installation of the Ellen Engineering Deep Sump Kit. Okay, well, that's another job well done. I hope you've enjoyed this period of instruction. Maybe it's been informative for you as well. Now, I'd like to say that this instruction can be used for all Boxsters, all Caymans, and all M96 equipped 996s or 997s as well. So if you need any further direction or some assistance, feel free to log on to our forums at flat6innovations.com or send us an email to info at flat6innovations.com or you can also get in touch with Ellen Engineering, the manufacturer of this component at ellenengineering.com. With that said, Happy motoring with your Porsche. LN Engineering, home of Nikki's. The original and genuine solid aluminum CNC billet Nicosil plated cylinders for a Porsche and Volkswagen. LN Engineering is proud to offer our Nikkis, the ultimate cylinders for your powerful and reliable air cooled engine. Call 815 472 2939 or visit lnengineering.com for more information.